All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Dave jumps on, he jumps on. Yeah, <clears throat> we, need to the yeah we, do. we need to add a uh, discussion and potential action for a replacement vehicle for the fire department. So we can just put that after the, what do, what do you want to do? Let's do it after the flood event, just to give them time okay. to get here. Yep, so we'll do it. We'll after? make it the last item. We'll make it the last item now. It'll be after. Yep. David Algebetti, Greg Timmons. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Unless you can meet your new assistant fire chief. I'm not, you've probably never met him. Or maybe you have. I know I have never met him. Long time ago. Yeah, that's what they say. All right. I just need a motion to approve as amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. No date this evening? Well, we don't know oh, yeah. because of the accident. Oh. We're not sure. He may just decide to turn around and go home and call via Zoom. Yeah, that's what Gene said. <laughs> As the crow flies. As the crow flies, he's good. But he hasn't called me either. I won't yeah, and he maybe he is. Um, but if he got down here and sat in traffic, he could have waited and then come around. Oh, the bell is not the no. Not the well, burglar I'm alarm like is, is the burglar alarm is. I not. like that. Maybe this is him. Yeah, I hear a cane. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Dave made it. We were just worrying about you. We thought maybe you'd so throw in the towel and, today, so and call, call me at this room. I assumed you got caught. In it could be. Oh, well, <laughs> as the crow flies, we can't tell you. How many? Wow. Oh, we yeah. can't have yeah. any I have no doubt. Wow, no kidding. Hmm. No. Well, I'm glad you made I said he's going to go home and call. <laughs> like the turn around. Yeah. Exactly. 187 cars. Yeah. Wow. That's how many went by him before they let him go. So it was backed up. Sound like the traffic person was doing the right yeah. <laughs> their job because they shouldn't let them all go through. I have no idea. They should just do like 30 or 40 and then let the other ones go. Keep it moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I know whatever. I got you. Uh, that's right. That's all that matters. All right. So we had called me into order, Dave, and we had amended the um agenda to include the discussion about a fire department um, vehicle re replacement. Okay. So as the last item. Well, that's that's where we were at. Um, so we would open up public comments. So if there's anything this evening that isn't on the agenda that you'd like to bring up, now it's time to do that. There's nobody in person, so it would be whoever is on line. Yeah, there's Paul Valley and Josh Wardell. So if anybody has something, or just say hi. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to yeah, say, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, I just want to say hi and thank you to you folks for all you do. Uh, I know it's, they say it's a thankless job, but I'm going to say thank you. You put in the time, <laughs> you put in the work, and uh, it's great to see you folks again. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Yep. I'm just tuning in to listen on. No comments. Okay. Right. So, well, thanks for coming, Josh. So we will move to our first uh, subject item, which is the internal financial control checklist, uh, which we normally go over once a year. Yep. <clears throat> so Pam, we were talking, we get laughing about it because we forget neither one of us write it on our calendar. Then the auditors are going to come and it's on their checklist. And I'm like, hey, do we do this? And she's like, hmm. So I couldn't see it. So I said, well, whatever. And um, so she completes it. And then, thanks, Steve. And then um, it just needs to be received by the select board. Did you sign these yet? No, not yet. So it just needs to be received by the select board. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Need a pen? Does it need to be signed by all board members? Or no, just, just one. OK. Anybody? I have seen that. Yeah, we do it Pay once attention a year. Or whatever. It's just once a year, Dave. That's probably you just block it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, we do it once a year. 
And uh, it's something that the state, Vermont State Treasurer's Office did a while back. I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, Vermont was like the municipal embezzlement capital of you know, the United world. States. Did you guys get these? Yeah. Yep. And so um, they, the Vermont Treasurer's Office came up with it. And then it's something that happened. It came up after that, Coventry. Yeah, and then there was, remember, then a couple the, more came That was out. the biggest one, the yeah. clerk, Stare at Coventry, that had well, embezzled money. There was a couple more, and so, you know, yeah. if the clerk is driving a Beamer and <laughs> taking big vacations, you, you might want to check it out. You got to check the check sheet. <laughs> you might want to check it out. See if it's all yeses on one person. <laughs> Some of these, you, you said no, uh, I, can, I would think that there would be a, a follow-up question. I know, I agree, and I can... I mean, like, not everybody has hands on the money. Right. Okay, who is it that has hands on the money? Right, right. and they, so some of the questions are, they kind of answer as they go along, but are all its town records currently maintained by one individual? They're not, because, which is good, because Dietrich balances the books, you know, balances the checkbooks, and then, um, you know, Pam writes the checks, but someone else, we approve all of our own bills. And then the trustees of public funds maintain their own money. And I don't believe Pam is a signer on their accounts because those are special rules. So that's kind of, I think, what she means. But you're right. Some of them are vague. Hmm. Yeah. There should be another question. Yes, I, I agree. And it's funny, too, like she says, have select board members attended financial trainings? She comes, she said, Teresa, I don't know that. She's like, maybe some of them have, maybe they haven't. She said, I don't know. I said, well, hence the don't, we don't know box. Um, so, but you're right. Some of them are vague, but again, this is the state of Vermont treasurer's office came up with this. So. Okay. Any further Discussion in regards to it. I don't. It just says it's been received by. I don't think you need to. I think we just need to get someone to put a signature on it. Because you're just saying you received it. Right. Okay. Did we have a motion on the table? I was told we didn't need one. We don't oh, need didn't one. Need just because you've enough. received it. We've received it. Yeah, exactly. It's in the packet. So thank you. All right. And then we had the updated Sand Hill Roadway and Stormwater Project. So I brought the plans in case anyone wants to see them, but I'm telling you, seven hundred and fifty thousand doesn't get you what it used to. So uh, you know, <laughs> seemingly it doesn't, does it? It's crazy. So um, Mike Maynard, and so the drawings were at thirty percent, and Mike Maynard um, came and met with um, Morgan and Richard and myself to go through and look at the existing stormwater. He was obviously interested in what was going we were going to find in the hole at the base of Sand Hill. And uh, so Alder Janelli has sent somebody over from the other job um, they have, that we have going now so they could take a look at it once we got the hole open um, and just went through what we were going to get. So basically we'll get a full road rebuild up to or just past Bicentennial. And then from there up, it's going to be, you know, we'll do a, we're just going to add a, um, I'm not going to, it's not skim coat. It's a is pavement it overlay. Up there. Yeah, we're just going to overlay. So I talked to Morgan about that. He thought that, that was fine. Um, so that's where we're at. We also talked about the possibility that a resident has some property they may want to develop on Sand Hill. So we talked to um, Mike Maynard about that and said, you know, if five places went in there, right, you know, what currently we know what size pipe it is, what would we have to do and, and that sort of thing. So we chatted about that a little bit. So hopefully we have more information about that before we get to a final design. Um, and then, um, you know, obviously we're talking about all stormwater. Looks like we're going to need a 
temporary construction easement on one property. So I'll have the town attorney deal with that. Mike was going to draw us a map to be hooked to the easement. And um, so we'll do that. Um, but really just because of where the stormwater is on their property already. So we just need to go in and make that right. So we know that the stormwater there is, you know, failed. Some of the systems are on people's lawns and, and in the past, the town has just kind of backed up and filled them in. Um, so we will be, you know, dealing with all that. So it'll be a thing of beauty when it's done. We're obviously a little concerned about <clears throat> connecting into the existing pipe base of Sand Hill. You saw that. I guess they want it. We're thinking, Slate pipe. Yeah, that they'd like it to be bigger, but, you know, we just don't definitely have needs to get that. done. That's yeah. for sure. <clears throat> but I don't know if we'll, who knows, maybe. I don't know, maybe between now and then I can come up with some more money, like try to find more money to extend that. Because how far does that, does that pipe comes down Sand Hill, the piece that we connected to, goes down Church Street. I'm assuming it goes all the way down the Church Street to the bridge. It, well, someone thought it crossed over to the, to the, to the rec field oh. school property, but I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm not sure. So. Not sure where it goes, but. We will maybe. see. Um, but so far that's, we're on, we're on target for that deadline. Of course, we've, you know, all the permitting, et cetera, is this, crazier. This work is happening this year. No, it's going to happen year. in the spring. We had hoped to do it this year, but um, I just, we couldn't get, I couldn't get this part together. And then, thank God we didn't because of the flood, oh, yeah. because of the flood. And then I have wrote the letter to um, close out the grant that was going to do P-Vine. So we'll keep the temporary bridge in there that we're renting at $16 a month and we're transferring that money to Camp Brooks. So thank God we didn't do it. I guess we'd be, we'd be really hosed then. So anyways, but in the spring, Hebert is currently on site. Obviously they're willing to bid on it. We can't um, just give it to them because it's, you know, EPA money will have to go through, you know, the process, but mm -hmm. we are considering, um, I did talk to Mike Maynard about bidding out pavement separately. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. It'll be very similar to like the Christian Hill project we just did. Yeah. Other than it'll be a new stormwater system in it. So, yeah. So this is where we're at. So if you have, I don't know if you have any questions on that. Like I said, I brought the full plans if anybody wanted to look at them. But so we're still at the 30% design, but they kind of sorted out where they wanted a couple of um, Richard and Morgan talked to Mike about where a couple of existing storm structures were that, and, you know, where they could relocate them, where they felt that they would do a better job. Obviously, they'll be ditching and stone line, that sort of thing. So it'll be great. Denise will be thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> once once well, it's all. Right away, the water the water the water the water That's back. right. Yeah, but we won't be touching that. I know you're just begging to get your driveway paved somehow. Did well, just... Fred told me that it was the responsibility of the town. Did he? Was that yeah. in your deed? <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> yeah. The easement for the water and said it's. Oh, know. I'll have to read that. Well, let's bring that. Oh, because I have no. You would say it, and I was like, "What is she talking about?" And it sounds like looking at Hebert's schedule there that they that they'll be finishing the water. Well, we'll be probably doing the water project next year through June, maybe. Yeah. So it looks like they got an awful lot of work they plan on doing. So you're probably gonna want <clears throat> probably gonna want them. Well, uh, I wouldn't say I guess it depends on who gets the storm right, water, but exactly. ideally it'd be nice to do it all at the same time because the water right. typically is just underneath the stormwater system. Right. Well so we, you have to move one, you know, move the stormwater in some cases to get to the water. I but. actually asked Mike, it's on the opposite sides of the street. Oh, is it up there? Hill. Yeah, he said. He well, said, at the bottom of Sand Hill, it's right, right yeah. in the same area. He said, we'll be doing two trenches that they'll go through and they'll do a trench for storm, for water line, come back, close up, okay. then they'll do a trench for stormwater. But he, he, they were implying it was on the opposite side. So unless I misunderstood, but it said, no, because he said they were going to trench it twice. So, um, so yes. it just looks like it'll have, you know, maybe the end of June to finish the water and then yep. start the stormwater project so after started June. They've started the uh, site work for the pump house up on... Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. They have. And then what they're doing, too, is the um, is what they're also doing, Dave, is they're going to build the 
pump station or part of the pump station where Crystal Drive and the well house for Pleasant Street, they're going to panelize them over the winter in their garage and then bring them in. So that was part of their thought process. That um, That's what Jimmy said at our last meeting. Good idea. All right. So as far as um, the current, we should talk a little bit about the current water project. We have hit a financial snag. Um, I submitted a requisition for 300,000 and some change and I got a reimbursement of $3,000. So <laughs> needless to say, called a few people. And ended up last week calling Neil Kamen, who like runs the drinking water division, called Patrick Monk, guy down, and talked to Cindy, our person. And no response, nobody called engineers. So the next day I sent an email to everybody. And I did get an email right back from Neil Kamen, who's the oh, runs the whole division, and said that he apologized, there was a delay, and um he said, he told me what he could say. And then he said, I can't say any more than that, Teresa. I'll be in over my skis, he said. So some in the meantime, the person in charge of our loan has been like firing back emails. And we submitted our loan application in April. So it's taken a while and to get our requisition. And I have paid out um, 200,000 to um, Hebert and then another I think 30 will be the next one, uh, just $34,000 and trying to figure out the cash flow. So I said today, talked to him today is what's in the checking account and what's in the sweep because we're now all of a sudden, I, I wrote to them and said, this is unacceptable. We're a small town. This will cripple us financially. If I have to get a tan tax anticipation note would, but so we're looking at the numbers today because between that and FEMA and Camp Brook and, you know, so I'm hoping that they're going to turn around our loan pretty quickly, but I may move forward with a tax anticipation note, even if we don't draw on it, just to have it in case, because all of a sudden we're going to be sitting on some big numbers. We're paying FEMA bills. You know, it takes a while to get that money back. Federal highways, that number is going to be huge. Although I did talk to Chris Hunt. Um, he is managing the federal highway. And I explained to him that, you know, I don't have the money to foot these bills for you you know, for the state, basically, because we know we're going to get 100%. So he was submitting a grant agreement today, wasn't sure how long the turnaround would be, but then I could submit for everything I'd paid out. And um, so hopefully, you know, that comes around, but I may, uh, may um, start the ball rolling it means you sign a tax anticipation note next meeting, just, just because I just don't know how fast the turnaround is going to come for the cash flow. So we, you know, calling a bunch of people and sending emails, the state's now responding and responding. You know, she seems to be responding very quickly. Now, all of a sudden things are happening and I'm signing stuff and they're sending, you know, so a lot of things are coming out, but it, you know, our application was in an April. And so we, you know, I, if, even if they have a staffing shortage, you know, then bring in some kind of help or something. But it sounds like, you know, even if this, even without the drinking water snafu piece of it, that we probably were going to need one anyway. This based upon the FEMA yeah. pieces that we're paying out right now. Yeah, it's hard to know. FEMA, I mean, you know, it's going to take you know six months to two yeah. years to get your money. You know, so yeah, no doubt. And I mean, we're already paid out. I don't know how much you paid out on the emergency end, but yeah, the final work we've already paid out like or yeah. will pay out like. I mean, I estimated one three hundred thousand there. I estimated one point three million when I went through and did all the damage, but I'm not sure. But you know, we have over two million in the sweep, so I'm not. You know, but I just, but like I said, I think we just need to have right. the tan just yeah. in case. So, um, did they say anything about because it's their screw up? Would there be any reimbursement if we have to? Oh, uh, they told us no, that no? we would not the line of credit, yeah, inter because Jason talked to someone at the state. Jason Booth is the engineer for Alton Elliott doing this project, and um, he he and he wrote to someone or called someone and said, Look, this is so not Bethel's fault if they need to get a loan for this. Because we did the whole 2.8 million without one, we would I you know I'd submit the pay the bill, submit the requisition, they and it worked. I mean, 2.8 million, and we went through it. But I'm like, you know, this is too much. So anyway, so it looks like we'll be looking at doing a tax anticipation note 
hopefully you don't have to draw off it, but just to have. What's a note like that go for right now? Oh, it's generally been 3%. I wouldn't even hazard a guess. I bet you it's not three right now. I don't know. Municipalities generally get better rates, but that's why I'm hoping we don't draw on it. But. Yeah. Even for that? No, he said mortgages. Oh, mortgage. Job. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I haven't called because I was still, it's been an ongoing thing all day I long. I don't know if they're similar. I know we were talking at the school meeting because we're looking at some potential bonding at the school mm -hmm. and the bond bank right now was about 3%. Yep. At the school. And now I don't know if that's oh, no. comes out of the same piggy bank or not, but that's what um, <clears throat> kind of what we were told at the school right now. Three, three and a half. Oh, no. So. All right. I'm sorry. I have to go to the town, this town business, but. Well, it sounds like, you know, if everything goes well, at the end of next year, we'll have Sand Hill completed. You know, it's hard to believe, but <laughs> um, so if everything goes well, but that, that will get all done. So, so yeah, that will be good. And what's next? <laughs> well, yeah, well, I mean, I okay, think. It's three, four, and five of the water plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this... We need some new vehicles and how about a grader and <laughs> yeah i mean we've we've been pushing that grader for a while yeah we got the gilead thing to figure out and then you know we have the whole camp road that needs to be tackled and they started on where they have the lights way up top no not yet um they just opened up the bids friday Gonna, no. Yeah. Wednesday. Next is last that going to be done for this year? Or is that like going to be up all winter? No, no, it'll be done. <clears throat> it's supposed to be done by, well, the engineers put it in for like 15th of December, but we asked them to be done by the end of November. It's going to be paved. Yeah. Because if it doesn't get paved before the end of this year, then it's, it's likely it'll be on our dime next year to pave it. So we're trying to poke them to get it done. Uh, and then we have the little one that's down by Doug's partials yep. just just on the back end of his property yep. that that's ours. So the same contractor is going to grab the we'll call it temporary culvert from the district to put yep. there. Um, so the, the idea is to have both of them done, you know, okay. by mid-December. So yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, July flood event wise. So the things that I know of, we have finished. Um, so like Lilliesville's done and Whittier's done. Thayer broke or Thayer and Ringe is done. We had sunken culvert and Campbell Road that we fixed and Brink's done. Um, Woodland. Woodland's completed. And we yeah, are, would have never looked like that. And I've been up that road. <laughs> yeah. Like if that, that doesn't hold up like that, I just don't know what to tell you because yeah. we put a lot of effort into that one. Um, and I know, you know, I know Mr. Townsend put a lot of effort into it, and it's way, way more improved than it's ever been. So if that thing blows out again, then it just was meant to be, I guess, because we have upgraded that thing as much as possible. Which one is it? Uh, Woodland. Um, we, we did a little bit at the bottom of um, Sugar Hill. Um, we got to finish the guardrail there um, sometime between now and the snow flies. Yeah, Macintosh is done. That wasn't necessarily flood, but through the grant, that's all done. That looks really nice. They did a good job up there. Um, they were on Dunham this week. So Dunham Road's coming along. And that will be done with that contract. The... Um, Derek Algegetti, he started uh, the peep vine stuff late last week. So he's done a small culvert and he's doing the big culvert today, uh, which is road today, right? Yeah. The, I mean, the big culvert's all in. Most of the roadway's in. They're going to touch up some things tomorrow and then they'll they'll work their way back to the peep vine sand hill intersection and start going back up sand hill. Um, and then we get a little bit more to do. Um, there on P vine in around the bridge there for the winter. So 
that's coming along probably by, you know, maybe mostly by the end of this week, that will probably be done. And then um, as soon as Gilman gets done on Dunham, he's going to head to Cleveland Brook, which will be supposed to be later this week. We'll start getting some stuff done there. And then probably the week after Derek will be done on his and he's going to move over to um, Abbott and old route 12 to do those pieces. How was it? November 17th? Yeah. Well, or 15th or something. We yeah. gave until the 15th should get done or 17th. Then. Yeah. Okay. They're moving along. I mean, it's. Did you cover Camp Brook? Camp Brook as in. Yeah. Did you oh yeah. Yeah. A little update bit. them in the flood. Okay. Yeah. So I have a meeting at 10 a.m. up there tomorrow um, to sign the contract with Jay McDonald and um, Jay. They also have agreed to do the um, hour one. piece. So I'm going to talk to them tomorrow. It looks like I got their notice of like their start date and it's um, November 1st. So I'm going to call. I'm going to have the 10 a.m. meeting. Did tomorrow. they get the boards or are they putting the boards out to close the road? And get mm -hmm. the numbers? Yeah. That's they may want to get that out this week. Yeah, well, it's their deal. Hopefully, they do it tomorrow. Um, so there'll be a lot of action up there. And I don't know how long that's going to take, but pretty much the the month of November between those culverts up there to get them done. So, so yeah, so they're they yeah they had till the middle of December. <sighs> okay. Oh, shit. So we're not paying that first of December, do you? First of December. Like, yeah, usually they about, have their own that's plan. about the end of the year. Um, so right now, I mean, right now, most of the, most of the flood repair stuff should be done by mid November at the latest, other than the culverts on Camp Brook, you know, that'd be the end of November, let's say first of December. So we, we're in pretty good shape. I mean, yeah, sorry. I mean, we're going to get one or two early snowfalls i mean that yeah. just happens and yeah. they usually don't even stick or they don't stay long so exactly so we um so yeah so if me with them at 10 and once i hear from them about their start that i'm going to call dylan del mccullough is going to do the four items that we need done on camper also as part of our the ddir the kind of fancy thing for the federal highways so there's four things that they're going to do sorry we have a separate accident the only thing I didn't mention is we still have the culvert to do on. The one on South Main? Someone was hit by a car. Yeah. Oh, that's No, in front of the town office. When did that happen? Um, Just now. That's oh, why I got the phone. That's what I'm trying to manage now. We still um, have the culvert to do in Perm, which. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the culvert to come in yeah, so that we can. You may not it. do that this year, right? <laughs> Well, where we're at with that is, sorry, so let me finish at Camp Brook. So once I hear from this date and start, then we can go to, um, we can, uh, I'll get Dylan in to come and do his stuff before they start. And then they'll put out their road closure signs. The contract agreement said that they would, um, that we had to give X amount of days of notice because federal highway is going to require that. So before we close the road. So um, yes, Dylan is also hopefully going to take care of Perham and Findlay Bridge. We'll do Findlay Bridge first. So that's a higher priority for that section. Then I do not know if I have the culvert yet, um, but worst case scenario, if I don't get the culvert and I can't get to Perham, we will fix the road damage and we will leave the two temporary culverts on top of the old one. It'll be fine for the winter. Uh, FEMA will have already bought the structure and we'll just install it our, you know, in this, in the spring. If, if we have to, that's just a backup worst case scenario, trying to figure out at this point, if we have to triage anything, that could be one of them, but hopefully that's not the case. We'll also, see if we can get one from another source. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Morgan was working on that today, but, or he was going to, but he was working for Dan, working with Dan McCullough because they were prepping Sand Hill and north road for pavement so i did tell him that he was supposed to call me the day and i said if they don't have it ferguson doesn't have it cancel it and i'll order it and have it well, they've three had days. enough times to get it but yeah now. so i just don't morgan have probably have time to call ferguson or he does and we haven't communicated today i haven't spoken to morgan so i don't know where it stands so that's a worst case scenario just trying to at this point because it's getting you know i just want to have a if i can't get it in the ground it's not the end of the road it, we're a world right there um so we can deal with that um, if we have to. Hopefully I don't have to, but you know, 
if we do, we do. The other thing is too, I also made a deal with the town of Rochester. Uh, the road foreman over there has agreed to plow from their end about a mile down because where we're going to have the dig, the person, the people that were bidding did not want to be responsible to maintain the town of Bethel Camp Brook Road to, to Rochester. So um, I talked to the road foreman, John, and um, he was going to meet Morgan up there and make a plan for a turnaround, but it was very nice of them and said, I really appreciate that. So they're going to plow that section um, for us. And um, bill us obviously accordingly but that would go to federal highway when does that close when do you think it's going to happen um first week in november first week in november or or maybe <laughs> october 30th something like that because he has to have notice out for a few days and we're meeting tomorrow so next tuesday would be halloween so and they can start mobilizing now i'm just thinking they just can't close the road traffic, those are for the window dressers bill that'll be happening in you know what months. it's better for them to go 107 anyways the road is better it's flat it's recently paved they've had a lot of work done so 107 is so much smoother anyways it'd be the best way for them to go um so um that'll be fine uh, so that whole stretch know. is all paved mm -hmm. from rochester down and exactly down. It's, so, it's the thing that you know, yeah, people who live over there. Exactly. <laughs> and then they know how to get around it. So yeah, so it'll be closed for um at least a month. Uh, you know, we're saying a month, but that's the plan. So and Rochester's happy. We're always happy when they close it, and we're and and uh, they're happy when we close it. So um so Rochester okay. well, is gonna plow. It'll, it'll, I'll just I'll let them know because they'll have to. And there's going to be a massive signboard at the bottom of Rochester Mountain saying it's closed yeah. too. So <laughs> yeah. there's a hint. <laughs> so so anyways, so we're still on target there. Um, I will work out some pricing tomorrow with um, Jay McDonald. They know what the budget is. You know, they know what we have for money. I did uh, Ryan Slack today uh, came by. Luckily, he verified that Rochester has the 10, the pipe. Um, he was going to White River, so he said, I thought the collars were in White River, but they're Woodstock. He has all the bolts. He's going to get the collars for us, so that way we will have all the material um, or all the culvert material. We don't have, obviously, Jay McDonald's going to put in their own stone, et cetera. Uh, Jaron Borg, we're not being held up by a river permit because it's not a whatever. There's some terminology that it's not like a important stream i can't remember the word but anyways which is good he just said just don't let me hold you up he's like just go for it and we'll permit it later like great <laughs> that's what we want to hear so um i should be done and did you tell me so chris has you have guardrail coming you tell him that for sugar hill right yep. yeah so no i mean we're, we're moving along pretty good yeah it's it's, it's kind of crazy better than some of the neighboring towns it's kind of crazy i'll tell you that well um, i mean Royalton, I heard they awarded everything to one contract. I know, I told you that. And that <laughs> one contractor backed out. And now <laughs> it was our favorite person. Yeah, I, I and, don't know. About and uh, so now they're scrambling. They were trying to get two of our contractors that are on our jobs to go do work from there. Like, sorry, we're busy. So, but um, so yeah, we're, we're plugging away. And I think the work that we've done in a lot of cases has been improvements. So yeah, I think in so. some cases, there's a few areas where it's just going to happen again. Well, he um, you know, there's a couple of those where you're just like, yeah, well, Whittier, a lady who lives on Whittier called and told Dietrich and said she doesn't know who um, who is uh, who did the work, but it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, Paul Valley, which culverts are these again? You have to be more specific, Paul. I don't know what you mean. If he's talking about the Camp Brook ones, it's the, yeah, the Camp Camp Brook culverts. Yeah, the the one the one above Doug's place that has the stoplights at right now, and then there's a culvert that it's just marked with a bump sign right now, which is on the very bottom side of Doug's property near Harold White's place. But those are the. Too. One, one thing that that has come to my attention anyways from being out and about with all this is and somehow i think we need to start 
you know, informally addressing it with our private neighbors is a majority of the stormwater damage that happened came from private landowners. So, you know, I don't know how we go about that in a nice way, but, you know, and they're clearly going to be things that it's going to happen again. So like a perfect example, if you have an opportunity is to go up, um, to go up Dunham and all the water comes right off this landowner's property, it goes right down the hill and then it overwhelms one of the culverts and it just blows out the whole Dunham road. And then if you're going up Whittier, all the water comes off the landowner to the left, which is, you know, it's a, a logged forest that's has a bunch of taps and stuff on it. And the water just finds these different ways off their land. And then it just blows out our road. Um, and I've seen that over and over again, that most of this really isn't our infrastructure failing. It's, it's stormwaters coming off private landowners' land onto our roads Whittier. and overwhelming them. Oh yeah, we've seen that in Whittier though. You add some culvert, so we get that water out of the out of the system sooner. Yeah, because water, you just because the water's going off the low side. Because if you just look at these landowners' land, the water <clears throat> isn't managed correctly, so the water just finds its different paths by itself, and and then it just you know, find spots where it just overwhelms our <clears throat> area. Uh, there's still quite a bit of landowners out there that don't have drive culverts. Um, so when you're trying to properly ditch the roads, you you then get to their driveway and you're like, well, do I dig a trench across it? Or, you know, because there's there's no culvert there. So there's, there's quite a bit of that stuff out there. And I, Teresa and I had talked a little bit about maybe putting something informally together um, town meeting to bring up maybe at yeah. the end of any other business, just kind of. And then we met with that addressing runoff on mm -hmm. private landowners' land of you know just you know how can we better manage this water that comes off of mm -hmm. different points. And then we met with two people from the Vermont Law School, and they we were curious about some of the the questions that we talked about. I mean, we talked about a lot of stuff about stormwater, and one of the things. I had said was it would be interesting to know what the landowner's legal responsibility is. And we talked a little bit about, I was thinking, you know, if they could come up with some information, I said, we'd, we'd, you know, once we vetted it, we could put it in town report and then, you know, maybe have a handout at town meeting. And, but, you know, in Bethel, it, part of, I can think of a couple instances in the 2019 flood where somebody's private drive goes like this and it's not ditched. It's not crowned. They're not managing their stormwater. So all this water comes down the road, plugs our culvert, and then blows out the road. I saw it in Lilliesville. And um, so the law has changed now. So the municipality, we can't just go pop a culvert in anywhere. We have to get landowner permission now because we can't divert our stormwater onto other people's property. So why should they be able to do it to a town road? Maybe there's, you know, if there's laws out there, I don't know what they are and I don't know how to enforce it either. So we thought it might be a good education piece to um, talk to. Sorry, I'm trying to do a notification. And I, and I think maybe at this point, you know, we just start the education process of or identifying maybe some of the more critical, like if somebody doesn't have a drive culvert, maybe we write them a letter to say, you really should install a drive culvert here. Yeah. And the thing is we can't force anybody or once they, you know, we can do if they're putting in property, um, if they're installed like Dave, he's built he was building some, so he would have to have a driveway culvert or driveway access permit. But if it's in, you know, somebody who's, you know, been there for a hundred years and never had one, we can't make them, I don't believe, put one in now. So we can tell they have to maintain their own. But we have an instance of that on at least one on Finley Bridge and um, where the people um, don't have the money and the culvert is in bad shape. And so Morgan and I talked about they were going to be out there. And I said, well, you can ditch either side just to help and maybe the water going through. But you know, how do we force people to do it if they don't have the money to – but we can't be responsible for every driveway culvert in town either. So – Anyway, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, we clearly have some <clears throat> that that run along 
streams and rivers that mm -hmm. that we're going to continue to have erosion issues with. Yeah. But there's a lot of them that <clears throat> it's clearly just you look at people's driveways and there's there's none. So. so due to the text messages, so there was an accident. Somebody was being guarded from the town <laughs> office parking lot. They can land dart there? Apparently, around that area anyways. So we were just back and forth about a notification, who tells the family, who does this, that, the other. And so Dave Aldrigetti was who I was texting with. Well, I got a phone call from someone else. And um, uh, he called VSP because VSP was not on site, which surprised me. But um, he must have left. They were there when I was. <laughs> yeah, apparently they left because we weren't sure who notified the family that an injury had happened or that this accident happened. But Dave um, just messaged me. He called VSP and they said the hospital will notify the family because the hospital will know what the injuries are and this and that. So there was a little who wants to, you know, who should notify somebody. So it just in all the hullabaloo, somebody you know, with all the cars backed up, somebody hit somebody and now they're being darted out. So a little gotten a little crazy. So I can, yeah, so I'm going to make that pitch. I think I can help. I think I can answer the questions. Um, so I emailed you guys and then I made you a packet. So um, you can see in the packet, I did um, updated the 20 to five to 30 year apparatus replacement plan. We put it in the town report every year. I printed out from the website that Greg Timmons and Dave Aldrigetti sent me everything that comes with it. Um, Dave told me that Tim, uh, Greg, Greg, excuse me, Greg has called at least on at least 10 rescue units. And he, as soon as they call, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. You just, it's very hard to get them. So what, the their rescue currently that they have does not have like a bunch of big issues but what the problem is is that the fire department has outgrown it um they got the rescue you know years ago um, i wrote down for when and um but it looks like yeah it's a 2000 ford f550 and they bought it they got it used, I think, in 2009. Also, a lot of the equipment on it is used that they got for free or at a very low price from the um, ambulance. So as you can see by their um, the chart, um, I asked Dave today, he seems to think 25 to maybe 30,000 that he thought that they could get for the rescue with the equipment in it. Um, I spoke to him that we could get seven grand out of his current budget. So that leaves that fund obviously in the hole by 43,000. But then I looked forward and updated their apparatus purchase prices again. And I need to have, uh, Greg Timmons was going to look at that too, I believe. But added I added $5,000 moving forward to that um, to their apparatus replacement plan. So if we, if the voters approve that, then it's gonna put their fund back at $5,000. If the voters or the select board doesn't agree to put the $5,000 additional into their budget next year, Dave is certain that he can find a way to cut it out of his operations budget. So when I did that, I did- um, Can you take us through the numbers like mm -hmm. <clears throat> completely? Because I get okay. lost a little bit here in this. So if you look at the top column, it gives you the fiscal year. Then it says available balance as of June 30th. Um, and then the next one is whatever their appropriation or donation was, and then their end of the year balance. So as you can see, they So right now we have 114,820. As of right now, we have at the end of June, yes. As of this moment, we have 114,000 in there. Then they're going to be getting this is their appropriation for the fiscal year from July. 2023 to June 2024, if we buy the apparatus at 234,000. So that appropriation hasn't gone in there yet? No, because we, we normally 20. do it in quadrants. Or No, I have quadrants on the brain. Quarters. <laughs> so out of that 38,000, have they received some of that money? or No, but I can move it all tomorrow. I mean, No, no, I'm just trying to no, no, I have a picture in my head. I usually here. do it. We kind of talked about doing it quarterly, but anyway, so just say it's in there because it is theirs. It'll have to go in. 
we take the purchase price out of 234 and then we add in okay if we sell sell the apparatus for 330,000 plus we can get 7,000 out of their current budget it leaves the balance at the end of June 2024 we'd have a negative balance of 43,550 so if and then the next year you know we would add in their appropriation and it would cover it because if we try to borrow for five years it's going to cost us i did the amortization schedule yeah it's going to cost us thirty-seven thousand in interest it seems more like we ought to just borrow from ourselves so the the vehicle's two hundred and thirty-four thousand with all this equipment on it <clears throat> okay so i just want to go through that okay so the it's a new it's a new cabin chassis yep with a used body it says it's a new F5 4 by 4 with a 6.7 liter diesel engine. That's what it says yeah, at the see top. That. Okay, yeah, professionally remounted. And then from what from what I understand from this is they're getting it the 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 utility body we'll call it. Yep. It's used and it's coming with all this hardware. Yes. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I gave you for two hundred thirty four thousand. Yes. And I gave you some. So what about our vehicle that we currently have? Well, then we're gonna sell that. And with the equipment that's in it, um, or or and that was gonna be my next thing. If this one's coming equipped, do we need all the equipment that we have in ours? Can we balance some of that? Yeah, like can we? If it's is, I guess I guess my first question was okay. Well, let's is start. our current truck twenty five thousand dollars just for the truck value, or no, is that with everything that's with in everything it? in it? With every all the tools and everything, yes, twenty five thousand. Well, that's what Dave thinks. He said he would start at twenty five thousand, but. We, I, we may be able to go to 30 because people are really looking for them. So I estimated at $30,000 as a sale of with it, with everything in it. And then 7,000 coming from Dave's current budget. And um, yeah, that's why I wrote the little note sale of apparatus plus from. Well, that's kind of where I got confused is the sale of apparatus tells me I'm thinking more oh, materials that are in the truck that you're selling, yeah. not the truck. Like no, the truck would be the truck and yeah, the apparatus is the truck okay. itself. And so everything in it. So okay. Dave seemed to think we could easily, and we were, it was a quick phone call. He was having a crazy day. So was I. So I'm, I'm estimating higher. I, I think that we could probably get 30,000 from it, but um, they also have, I'm not too worried about that because also the fire department themselves has a bereavement fund and they have some money. So I think they'd be willing to make, if we, you know, maybe they'd make a five thousand dollar donation towards it if we could only get twenty five thousand. So I think that we can come up with this thirty seven thousand ten dollars from the sale plus, um, you know, the current budget, general fund budget for the fire department plus, um, maybe from their bereavement fund. So then, I had increased their annual appropriation. We were at like thirty eight thousand, and then kind of looking ahead. With the cost of everything and the same problem we're going through with the capital equipment fund, it seemed like, you know, I was like, we needed to add five grand to this. Just the prices of everything have so gone crazy since COVID. So then I just increased it by five and moved it all the way down. And um, again, if the select board didn't agree to do the five, um, I'm sure that we could get five out of Dave's next year general fund budget. So I feel like for the one year that we're going to have to float this or not even one year. I mean, if we don't get the thing till November by July, we could be whole again. So for the versus going to the voters, paying a lawyer to do the bond, pay the interest just doesn't seem. And when would we take, feasible. when would we have this? I don't, that I can't answer for you. Um, I know that once we, you know, they have it. That's all I know is that they have it. Um, so if I had to guess, it would be, you know, a month or two. So, and how many miles does ours have on it? I couldn't tell you that. Brand new, isn't it? Ours oh, currently? Wow. No. Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't. Say I mean, that. I, I just got a. No, our the one that we have. The two thousand. We well, because I mean, just because it's twenty three years old. I understand our that. It's the market for trucks right now is. We're at it, so it it's, got a lot of miles. It has yeah. a lot of miles, on, I'm sure. Yeah, I'd say so. And. They gave it to us. Mm -hmm. That's right. For the fire, the ambulance gave it to 
the town of Bethel. So you've got nothing wrapped up in this thing except for obviously maintenance and some equipment, but you never bought the truck. And even some of the equipment Dave said came with it. So was and this, um, so based on your replacement plan, uh, I'm just going to go assume that this hasn't been sitting here to be planned out at this exact time. It was planned out for next year. So originally but this was bumped it was out a year. Be, and if you looked in the Bethel, if you looked in the town report, it was bumped out a year, but <clears throat> they've been looking and they knew they had to start looking because they knew it could take a while. And like I said, Greg has already looked at 10 that were like no goes. And I've been involved with purchasing unless you're buying brand new and building it yourself, it's hard to find because there's a market for it. Um, Do we know what the number we had been carrying in there were, was? For a purchase price? Yeah. Were we carrying $234,000? I think it? I was carrying, I want to say, uh, I should have printed my original. I don't, and I almost grabbed town report. I want to say, maybe it's on the website. I want to say that I was carrying like <clears throat> one sixty five or to something and um let me see if it's on the website so if we don't so basically what this i'm just looking at the big picture here so so if we did do this mm -hmm. then <clears throat> then what this does do because this is approximately eighty thousand dollars more than what we had budgeted right yeah but also remember we that number was old that well, we I'm, had I'm in there. not saying it's not worth that. I'm just no, I'm just saying that. So the next replacement piece is twenty thirty one. Yeah, which is a which is a two thousand one Freightliner, which you're going to have to borrow for. Right, but now we're going to have to borrow two hundred thirty four thousand rather than. Well, don't forget. I've also no because I increased eighty thousand. No, because if you look, well, I'm just look at because we also remember I updated, I increased mm -hmm. the appropriation by five thousand dollars. Be just and <laughs> well, that's lovely, but well, we don't know if we can afford that. Well, no, I mean I'm we saying got to that road yet. because it's the co equipment cost of going so crazy. Well, I think I mean I haven't even looked. I know. I, I mean we haven't looked at the budget, but. You know, know, we were already tipping the scales last year. We have to remember that. I know. We have some monies in there that we did some one-time things last year. Mm -hmm. We got, okay. you know, 50000 that we're getting for the transfer um, okay. facility sales that only goes right. so long. You so, know, so we have to get ourselves okay. back a little bit. So if you look, I had 165000 mm -hmm. in there, but I only had an apparatus sale of $10,000. Okay. So down here where we're now at 234, I was at 223. Yeah. So we're looking at, you know, a $8,000 difference. Um and like I said, we were cuz Dave asked me today, he said, "What do we have in for a price uh -huh. on the e Freightliner on e or on the um excuse me, uh, e engine 1?" And I said 450 and he said, good, because anything they had been looking at was between four and 500,000. And the last time I purchased a fire truck in Bristol had to have been 10 years ago. And it was, I believe, pushing 375,000. So what's the time frame? Did, did they say what the time frame on getting one of those trucks is like if we want to get a plow truck it's going to take us two oh, years i don't know is i mean a fire truck it, it, two it, years or is it longer or? yeah it's about 18 months to two years because you generally in that case so we'd have to order it in exactly 2029 to get it and buy that right because you're buying it and and you're having it built so um i, I, I mean, i'm sure we're all going to be here at 2029 right i mean in these same in the same, same seats. seats. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Won't we? Who draws the short straw? Dave's saying absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but, you know, and I will to... say that we have built this budget around keeping a, a fire apparatus, fire trucks, 25 to 30 years because they're so expensive. And, you know, it depends on how many miles I have things, but they sit too. That's the other mm -hmm. thing. But you were also lucky with, uh, and Dave makes a good point here is the, um, 
you 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 were given this vehicle that you're going to try to sell for 25 to 30 grand. So anyways, I knew they were looking. I had no idea until I got a bunch of emails or phone or something on Friday and um, just said, well, I'll look at it Monday and crunch the numbers. So it's devil's advocate on this. So mm -hmm. if if we did move forward with a new vehicle, mm -hmm. it sounds, is the vehicles other than, other than it, from what you said that they're starting to outgrow the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Is there anything wrong with the vehicle that all of a sudden next year at this time we're going to say, oh, it's going to put a bunch of money into it or or we have to get a new one because yeah. he it's just broken down or he said um he said really they had outgrown it. He was not I don't believe Dave was aware of any major repairs or issues that it had, but I will also say that they're not like the road crew in that, that they don't, you know, there aren't, isn't somebody working on these vehicles all the time doing maintenance. So whether or not there is something, you know, lingering in this 23 year old vehicle, I, I don't know. I can't say for sure. Um, I can text Dave. Let me see if he's, maybe he's wrapping up. I remember when we got this vehicle, I think it was for free cover page on one of our town reports, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't, around like 2012 or something like that, I think. Let me just text him. What is the board, what's the board's thoughts on replacing? And it's also hard too because they couldn't make it, which was not their fault, obviously. And I feel like they're in a position where they want to take some action. Certainly happy to set up a meeting between one of you and myself and then if you guys want some more information that I can answer if you want to give the blessing now or if you want to give the authority to somebody else after some more questions are answered I you know it's, we it's, couldn't it's, anticipate an accident and then a second okay. accident so uh, they don't ask very often <laughs> uh, yeah I, I, but they ask for a lot when well they because unfortunately they're big purchases mm -hmm. It's like the road department. Like, you know, that's a stinky thing. And I like grasping for new computers. That's expensive. What else? I'm going to interject something. I don't, sorry, G. Go ahead. Um, I'm wondering, because of the, what these new vehicles are, mm -hmm. maybe who we have looking at our maintenance program by no fault of their own, of course not. are not really qualified to maintain these vehicles. Yeah. So, I mean, we might want to look at the potential of saving some money yeah. and extending longevity if we had it serviced by people who are trained to service these high-tech motors and transmissions and I all the systems they have. Yeah, I can say this. I know that when they have repairs, it's not like it, no. you pop the oil out, throw some new in, grease right, a couple of course. fittings. It's not, that yeah. isn't what it is anymore. No, I know. I can tell you that I know that a lot of times their vehicles go to Sable and Sons. But I can also tell you that like the bigger trucks where they have like pumps, they have KME come out of New York or maybe somebody not KME, I might have the wrong initials, but they come and do all their like pump testing and so they specialize in that sort of thing. But as far as the engines, but, you know, and I don't know, um, is if I doubt, well, because this is out of state, they don't certainly doesn't come with any sort of, uh, like maintenance plan, like we've talked about, well, but that is something we could it. set up. Well, but you're right. We could set that up with a proper person to take a look at these on a regular basis. I mean, if we're getting 25, 30 years out of it, I guess, well, I always look at my John Deere tractor that's 75 years old and still doing the job. Yeah. Yeah. Do they say what? <clears throat> to last, too, don't you think? You know? So, but I agree with that. I think that there's, and, and I, they could very have a very specific maintenance plan that I'm just not aware of. But I do know that we've paid bills for like Sable and Sons and things. But I mean, that's just, a, just what the nightmare we've gone through with that six wheeler. I mean, like, are you mm -hmm. kidding me? Oh, I know. Internationally. Yeah. And I will say this. I don't knock on 
would. I don't have, I haven't had those kind of issues really with the fire department. And, and um, I don't know if it's just because their equipment isn't beaten on and like used every day, like, you know, road. Yeah, but you, you, know, jump, you jump in, it hasn't, it hasn't run for right. a month and you're right, you're pedal it right on the floor. Just sits on a heated floor. I mean, I'm assuming that they're, they do, you know, somebody. What was the reason the for the municipality to get rid of the one that we're looking at? I don't believe that it's, it's not being sold by a municipality oh, and it's I brand thought, new. It's I thought it said it had been used in a couple of parades or something. Um, Maybe just for them wow. because. The name of their company. Just the body. Thinking, yeah. We're just ju just buying the body, and then we're buying the cab from somebody else. No. Company is put it together. Yeah. Right. Exactly. A brand new cabin chassis, mm -hmm. and yeah. the body has been on a 2003 truck in great. Gotcha. Yeah, and he did say okay. So I the full you. rescue equipment included for free with the truck. Okay. About eighty thousand. So we're buying this from a dealer. Yes, and I. Let me check my email and say it. And other than um, the, yeah, nobody um, had heard of before. Other than the normal bases that come with it, is there any other? But I'm aware, I don't know. I guess I had a. It seems to me that the, the fire department's done due diligence, and uh, they don't come when they do. It's big, mm -hmm. but they don't come, you know, often. Um, and so if, if you're looking for a motion, I would move that we go ahead and approve it. Just to back up what Gina is saying, um, I also, I appreciate Teresa's approach of looking at this sort of from a fiscally conservative standpoint of using what funds exist and also not getting a loan that then costs us the amount that we're getting the loan for. Um, I think that's the smarter play here for us, even though it puts us in the hole and sort of fronting the money, but for a bit of time, they will recoup it. And um, yeah, I mean, these are big purchases, but also they're the I think it's least well-paid crew in our entire town. And they do probably one of the most vital jobs. You yeah. you want them to show up when you need them. And so, you know, part of me says, we, we give them the equipment to do the job and to do the job well. I know you're not saying that they should, but. Right. I mean, even in my trade, there's a lot of things that I can't do anymore because, I mean, it's just oh, unless I want to go to school for two years, right? I can't. I can't do it. Well, and I think that's the whole thinking piece is if we make this concession and say yes to this, we also put with it our our demands of okay, but. We want to know, we want to understand your maintenance plan better. We want to understand that these things are being well maintained so that they last the 25 to 30 years that we're putting. I mean, it's a 20 plan. truck, so I know it's not being worked on by any Joe Schmo. Right. It's going to have stuff there that you don't know anything about. Right. But it also, you know, with the new vehicles, it comes with a lot more responsibility computers on wheels when it comes to all the different so, components so it's reasonable to ask them to to consider a maintenance plan of some sort well, and at a minimum to report it to Teresa. here is what we do so then she has the answers when we ask those sorts of questions of how are these being maintained you know and believe it or not it's, it's just it's just as worse to have a vehicle sit yeah. As it yeah. is to use it all. And they use sit on that heated floor. So I just messaged Dave said how as it, just remember whoever does the motion has to go to North Carolina for this thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh well Gene made the I'm motion. Just so he'll be messaging him. Trip. <laughs> it's on Elite Ambulance Sales is the website. So I messaged him to so how are you getting this vehicle here if they approve it? Is that included in the price? So Again, I, you know, Greg Timmons is the one. It's kind of hard to do this. <laughs> Probably Dave's out manning some sign, you know, like. Also texting. Yeah, he's like, he's gonna, get, like gonna get right. Yeah, he's like, Therese so, keeps texting. I mean, I know it's not the end of the world, but I'm sure they'll have to letter it up and decals yes, and all that. And that did, usually costs some money. Too. Is that did, part of that or? No, and he did say that he would either come out of, I think, the, the bereavement or his budget. I think because I know okay, they said they would get it here. And he said, um, if there's a delivery fee, they'll cover it out of the um, bereavement fund. So I know, like with the cruiser, when we redid the cruiser, I think there was like 
maybe a thousand bucks that went into yeah. lettering and some other things that went on it. Um, so it's probably so I'm asking him something similar lettering. for this, I would imagine. <laughs> I wonder where this guy is. <laughs> He's he's obviously between here and 107, standing next to the road, going that freaking town manager won't stop texting me. <laughs> the other question is, do we uh, or do we want to deal with that one first? This, I, have, I have another thing to talk about on this. Okay. Do you want to deal with the motion first? Well, I mean, we can just. Do you want to? Is your con so well, your I, it might has nothing to do with that motion. It has to do with yeah. with this paperwork here, but not that motion. Okay. And just a suggestion. So you made a motion to approve. I the motion, purchase. made a motion to approve the purchase. I would second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Dave. Uh, do we want to alert the town folk that uh, this forty-three five fifty is not going to be good in twenty fifty? So maybe we want to start putting some bigger numbers in there for them to look at. Well, exactly. That's um, I and it, what it's funny because if you look at town report, these numbers were much less because of the, we were down at like it's a zero. Then it was like twenty thousand for a while, and then so when I went and I hadn't, I'd revisited it every year, but briefly when you're doing town report amongst uh, the up bereavement fund will pay to letter it. He says, um, so. I went and updated, you know, the equipment added five grand each to these prices. Cause I was going to ask Greg now that, and I didn't get to meet him with him, but once we do, I was going to ask him since he's doing this really looking is to see if these numbers that we even have out here are even valid anymore. So we need to update this for town report. And currently um, we're at, you know, we haven't done next year's budget. So whether if we can get it to this 43, you know, that's the hope. And if not, if we can't, we can't. We just cut $5,000 somewhere out of the fire department budget and come up with it ourselves in-house. But um, I wanted Greg to look at those numbers because the equipment committee for the highway department has done this. Because when Dave and I and Gary did this uh, a few years ago, you know, we had some base pricing. And then since then, we've just been kind of adding either a percent or a flat amount. But now that Greg's been actually on the hunt and out there looking he, he could, you know, update these better. And it's one of the things that Chris has, you know, been talking about is to coming up with um, just more accurate projections. Well, I remember projections. we started the equipment fund for the town, the mm -hmm. highway department. We started out at $10,000 a year and that was fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was, was that getting you, right? A couple, no, a couple shovels. Yeah, exactly at this rate. No, it's true. And then, you know, especially now, I mean, we just updated with the equipment committee, updated the capital equipment fund for the highway. And it's it's insane, the increase in equipment. And you must see that in your business. I, I just can't, it's like, what? You know, the jump in price. And then when I had heard that the auto workers were going on strike, I was like, oh, dear Lord. Bro. You think that $60,000 automobile is expensive now? Mm -hmm. Sweet. Exactly. Well, so, what you just call tires? Yeah, nine hundred. I'm. A, I just had. Oh, I just got okay. some on there. Fourteen hundred bucks. So the ones I just I mean, put. That, that little thousand dollars for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we definitely probably need to look at when we're doing our budgets mm -hmm. this year. Look at all of our schedules. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing that we kind of have thrown in, you know, some some of these further out schedules we show borrowing money and yeah and borrowing money with high interest rates is you know we got to start thinking about mm -hmm. does it make more sense to start putting more more away yeah that may raise the tax rate right but in the long term is a better deal for yeah. everybody in the town rather than wait and all of a sudden have to take a seven percent interest right that then we are going to Spend, spend mm -hmm. 50 or 60,000 exactly. on something we're not getting anything back on. You know? I agree. And that's why we did that in 30. Like this fund, in order to get that, we'd have to jump this up to like 75, 80,000 exactly. for the next but five you, years. But to if be able you to pay look that down here, off. I've tried to budget enough to actually mm. buy it. Right. So, but because we were behind, well, remember, I can tell you that a few years ago, um, you know, when I started here, what was happening was <clears throat> there was being an amount of money 
was being deposited. Just enough in, to pay the is loan on the truck. Not quite. That's what they used to put. Yeah, but not Just enough to pay the loan on the existing truck. And it was in the hole. We never get ahead. But and and because they were also taking other things out of it, so we had to climb out of a hole. You can see at mm -hmm. 2021, they were 18 grand in the hole. Right. And then, so yeah, so you're right. In 3031, it looks like a vote to borrow, and then, but down here by jumping this up, we could pay for it, but. That's that's you and, know, I, and I know nobody all. wants their tax rates to go up no, and, and not. you know they want the lowest tax rate possible but you know just like as we saw with this phase two water I mean a huge difference between mm -hmm. the first water phase and the second water phase when you talk about interest on a loan right yeah um, and we're gonna have a lot more of these things where I, I know it's painful to ask for it in the short term more money but it, in the long term it's probably gonna pay off yeah. dividends to buy these rather than yeah. lease or, or finance. Yeah. Um, Cause I, I usually yeah. when interest rates go up, they don't just come right back down. They stay up for a while, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and we have to keep in mind that we're looking at, you know, down the barrel of relatively quickly, a new town garage. And I believe that we have enough money in the, like a building fund or capital improvement fund that we can pay for the engineering out of pocket, which might be really smart to do. And then, then we'd be able to just bid the work. Um, there is an engineer that has built two town garages. So I'm kind of interested. I'd like to go see their town garages or at least reach out to that engineer because now they basically have kind of canned plants. So they've built two similar, very similar styles. I want to say Pomfret, I can't, but there's just two of them. And they, so, and recently too. Do they have grants out there for Not, large fire department equipment pieces? You know, no. there's that, that's nothing the out thing. there. Over no, because they know that towns are going to pony up the money. The grant money that you can yeah. find is really, it's roads, it's mm -hmm hazard mitigation it's i mean i can't like i tried to get us a salt shed grant but we're not close enough to the river so <laughs> we don't qualify we and, <laughs> and um sometimes they have like building and grounds mm. grants to the state where maybe you could get a little something but mm. a lot of, their focus recently has been seemingly on since covid um community buildings and things like that that, that we don't have don't currently have the space for i mean you know we're, we're and also too they know what we're up to we, we've kicked the can so far down the road that we can't just do maintenance to save it you know they're no dummies you know <laughs> they want to but we also don't have you know can't buy stuff to it's one more thing we can't afford to maintain <laughs> all of our everybody out there knows that prices are going up mm -hmm. and yeah you and pound Penny wise or pound foolish. Mm -hmm. It's just Yeah. Well, you know, you just do the best you can. And um, you know, we we've been lucky. We've seen some growth in the grant list. There's still a lot of zoning permits that have been issued, but so I think, you know, hopefully there'll be a little more growth in the grand list this year and outside of the reappraisal. And um, but yeah, it's hard, you know, you're trying to, you know, do what we can. And I also have a feeling it's kind of funny. I mean, I've been at this. 19 years and I feel like things have changed in this but the people don't want to pay for bigger government but they want bigger government because they want you to do more for them so that you know comes with a price and a price tag either, you know or a consequence either we say no we can't do it I mean Bethel is, is small we you know do what we can efficiency wise I mean there's other towns similar size with more staff and um but you do it what you can but I do think there's been a real, in the last few years, 10 years, turn towards, you know, I want more government. I want you to do more, but I don't want to call it more government. And I certainly don't want to pay for it, but I want you to do more for me. So, I don't know, it's interesting. We're just talking about keeping up. We're yeah, exactly. About we're just so talking about keeping the wheels on the bus. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about paying for We're just trying to keep the wheels on the bus, right, Gene? Right. <laughs> so... Yeah, we do what we'll do what we can. Yeah. So will that um fire department utility body fit on the back of two mules? <laughs> <laughs> Same as I'll find out. <laughs>
We can build a little pen out back. That's right, exactly. Do you see the price of hay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got that cornfield there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and, right. And oval In the flood they, they can just wander around like Sonny's chickens out here. They'll just, that's they'll right. just wander around. Yeah, we'll wander around in the corn in the floodplain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So did Free you have mules. other questions about the about the All schedule? All I was suggesting is that if you don't leave that 43550 through 2050. Yeah. I think yeah. people should know or be alerted to the fact that we know that that's going to change. That's, it's going to change. Yeah. And we'll definitely know more from, like I said, once Greg, I could sit down with Greg and Dave because I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to have the budget, at least a little bit of the budget for the 13th, November 13th select board meeting. But usually that's fire and some of the basics. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm going on vacation the 15th. So the following agenda is going to be a little tight. So we'll have to, I don't know, have to make an agenda two weeks in advance and just plan on just changing it. <laughs> why I, 13th will be my last meeting for a while. Okay. Oh, I thought, I thought you were announcing something no. else. I'm like, wait. <laughs> no. Spring that on me. Um. Okay, that's fine. Um, so we'll... Probably I should be able to do maybe Zoom the next one, but We'll, we'll see how it's going. And I can email you stuff and you can always call or email me, you know, if you have, or Chris with your, you know, two cents on something or on the budget or questions. And so we can always, you know, certainly do back and forth, but yeah. So I'm hoping to give you a little bit of the budget on the 23rd or the 13th, but you know, like I said, I usually do the fire department, the listers, you know, all the stuff, the basic stuff, obviously everybody wants to lay into the highway budget. That's the big one. So We'll see. I'll be on vacation like the 15th through the, I don't know, 23rd. So I'm basically going to be gone like a Wednesday to a Wednesday. So it's a, so we have a select board meeting <clears throat> and I'm gone and I'll have to put out an agenda like the day I, I get back. <laughs> so that could be a little rough. <laughs> we get, anyways, but um, so hopefully between, I, you know, I'm not sure. I'll try to, I don't, I know I can't get the highway budget to the 13th because we need to get all the other work done and then I can sit down with Morgan and AJ honestly once I sit down with people it doesn't take too long and I keep track of through the years we add they come in we make notes we add stuff and then um Chris asked me today about health insurance uh, dental insurance that type of thing and I don't I think I had a notice about dental insurance if there was going to be a rate increase um but I haven't yet heard about health insurance so we'll see what that's going to look like you know in the past we've switched from we were on blue cross blue shield we went to mvp so we'll see what that looks like um and those things um you know all changes we have the most current rates currently from retirement so some of this is really just if i could just sit down and no one talked to me for like two days i could take the whole thing out <laughs> so yeah, yeah. i'll just take my laptop to north carolina the heck with wedding plans but I, you know but i <laughs> do a budget <laughs> you know not take a page out of dave's book but i think you know this budget season we really got to look hard at the benefits mm -hmm. compensation and yeah. and i'm not just saying to pick on our no, people it's not like even even my work who hasn't changed theirs in a decade mm -hmm. like they have stayed so firm on Mm -hmm. and on the trouble, it. They, they're going up this year yeah. the and trouble there is more money out of my pocket too, too yeah. as far as i'm concerned the trouble is is that we've been working off percentages and so percentages they, just do not cut it anymore because the, mo the more you make or get paid whatever three percent when you were making a dollar an hour wasn't too bad we could stand that but three percent you're making thirty dollars an hour now what's a trouble now we're in trouble yeah, yeah it's, and it's, it's hard too because we had a job open for over a year in the highway department. And then we had no applicants last year for a summer position. So it's a, I am always for looking at benefits. Always, always, always. It's always something we have to look at every year, but it's also very difficult because currently if you would have a CDL, um, you can get a job driving the school bus for $30 an hour. Come on, man. I can't fight that. Yeah, but you're only working five hours a day. But, yes, and you get but, no benefits. But here. some people don't look at the big picture that way, and, that's, and you and know that's that. What I was going to say is, it used to be when, we, when I was young, mm -hmm. benefits were a big deal. Yes. Today's young people, most of them don't give a shit. 
they don't yeah. see it. Which they don't, is too they bad. don't see that as being a, a good thing. Yeah. It's and, like, whoa. Yeah. And the thing with, you know, when you work for a municipality, whether it's Veemers or Visers, uh, you come in the gate and period, in the end, you lose this portion of your salary right out of the gate. You know, here it's 6.65% unless you make over a certain dollar per hour and then you're jumped to 7.15%. So immediately out of your paycheck, you just lost that much money. Um, but again, you know, we have looked at, um, we currently have an HRA. We could look at HSAs. I mean, I feel like there's some options that we could look at to, um, without a big burden to the employee, but maybe, you know, if people have an HSA, they can put money into it. And HRAs, you know, the town um, does take care of, you know, some, half of the deductible. And so, and just needs to be scrutinized. Every, it, it you just got to look at our options and see yeah. what we can do. And yeah. And you can, there's even, I think everybody's in the same boat. There's even small changes too. Your current policy is that um, the town pays their share up front. You can pay your share second. So if somebody burns through their thirty four hundred, they may never touch your money. So there's there's That's some right. small, also small options. It's also difficult when you have long term employees um, that have been working with the same you know benefits, and they and they use them, and they're grateful for them. You know to have that change because I have seen towns do it, um, and it's always been kind of an anathema to me. Uh, where they, I'm going to cut your benefits, but I'm going to give you a raise. And I'm like, okay, come on now. Now you're going to make that raise on overtime and everything else. So how much money did I just save? Or did I, I think I just spent more money because a percentage of their benefits, but then they were given my raise to offset it. And I was like, how's the math working there? So, but it's always a difficult thing. And I think that benefits are an inequitable topic. And they're just something you can't make equitable. It's just somebody uses this, somebody uses that, and it's difficult. You know, one of the things we've talked about before, which I would be in support of, is changing the personnel policy so that if you are hired after a certain date, this is what you get. Mm -hmm. We did that in the industry. Absolutely. You know, and then it kind of draws a line in the sand and says, okay, if you're hired after this, you get this. And as people leave, you lose some of that, you know, burden burden or whatever so but I'm, I'm open to that and as soon as i see the pricing we'll work on that and um the schedule usually comes out i usually have to sign the contract in january so so we'll know before that pretty soon usually it's october the price i've already got my notice that my medicare supplement's going up oh, of course you did. Huh? yeah because right. they're going to give you a three dollar raise and they're going to the supplement that covers nothing premiums by five <laughs> bucks so you lose two dollars i remember that my mother-in-law the first year that we actually Got a positive direction. Yeah. I remember that with my, my mother-in-law once told me, she said, well, I got a, a dollar raise. And she said, and my health insurance went up like, <laughs> like a buck and a quarter. So she's like, I just, I was like, yikes. Yeah. So it is. And so it's definitely something to look at. And, yeah. All right. Anything left on the town manager? I had report? nothing. I on think there. I was, three things we've already talked about. Yeah. I was, <laughs> I, I wrote nothing. I, it was one of those weeks. I was trying to keep the wheels on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I've got nothing. Yeah. I, I, right. I couldn't. I even looked through my calendar. I'm like, I'm just in the it's between FEMA and the water project and it and the, preparing for the audit for the 30th. I and people coming in. I'm let's, you know, fire out putting fires. Forget it. You, there's nothing else <laughs> happening. Um, select board minutes from the 9th of October. Anybody have any amendments to it or just need a motion to approve as written? <clears throat> Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And some communications in there. So you heard that there's an in here was from GMP. So um, Maddie, I think that was her first name. Let me double check. Now, was she here? Or they, that, her, her um, Tiana. Smith was here. Yeah. Okay. She's the one who CC'd. And then Maddie had reached out to me to let me know, you know, what was going on and gave us some plans. So it's, so it's, it's, you know, pushing towards a zero outage for Bethel would be great, yes. especially with some of the storms we've had. And also, especially Pleasant Street. I mean, you got the fire department, you know, the school has a generator, but really it's all about the sewer 
you know, the pump yeah. station right there, because otherwise we have to bring somebody in at all just to start pumping, mm-hmm. you know, and hauling, which gets expensive. So um, the school has a generator, of course, and but, you know, so it would be nice to, you know, have some. So she had grids. mentioned that the that the grant hadn't been no nope. awarded yet. Right. But yet they were still moving forward with the project, if I read it. Yeah, correctly. she said they're still starting to advance the broader. Does that mean they're just doing initiatives. some of the... They want to get the they're just red tape head in the right direction. So they must think that they're getting it. They must be, because she said they're going to start conducting yeah. studies for undergrounding in zones two and three. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so... Somebody must have given yeah. a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, because... Yeah. Can't imagine that they would start yeah. moving with this thing if they didn't know it was. Coming. Well, and they did tell us that even if they didn't get it, they did have some things in Bethel that they were going to do. That's so, but did she say what the new date would be on knowing about it instead of? I don't. It was supposed to be this past summer, right? It was supposed to be June. Um, let me see if she. Let me she her. mentioned something about fall in there, but didn't say anything about. Um, like it being a award. Department of Energy initially estimated they would announce awards in the summer, but they have not made any announcement yet, so we're still waiting on a decision. In the meantime, we're starting to advance this broader zero yeah. option. So she just said, um, just keeping us sitting the- on the same desk as your um, your your loan. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Must be. Same person. Their neighbors. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sharing a desk. Matter. So the zero out. So she gave us, you know, some information which I thought would be interesting. Yeah. And then I put in the minutes from the, I don't even know what that stands, Wait, River Valley, I don't know, R, I, yeah, what's this? Inter-regional? Inter-municipal. Inter-regional energy? Inter-municipal. Energy coordinator. Oh, I was like, okay, I'm like, I don't even know what this stands for. So there you go, Gene. So I did put that in here and, um, yeah, I've just been calling Any, it IREC for so long. I don't blame you. <laughs> After that. So I just put that in here for you for information. Um, so just for a reminder, you're gonna have your November, is it third or second? I thought it was the second. Uh, yeah. or, no, it's not the fourth. November second is our special meeting. And so we will meet here at three o'clock mm-hmm. and then we will go to Wright Road and then we will come back here at five. So what happens is I had a quick tutorial today from David Roof. Um we no minutes or we don't take any minutes up there. At mm-hmm. the meeting, we just walk, you know, part of the class three, maybe a little bit of the four, but we don't need to go all the way to Rochester. And um, we will, then we come back here at five and then it's a quasi judicial hearing and he'll, he and Chris will run the meeting. And so you'll have testimony. I'll have to give testimony. You'll get sworn in. Um, Morgan will have to do the road foreman and um, <clears throat> about the fact that we need to, how much it's going to cost, why it's not feasible to bring all the road up to standard, um, that sort of thing. I have to get him an estimate this week. And um, so we had had one inquiry from a property owner in Brantree about their access that David Rue responded to. Um, but I haven't heard. That was the only person that we'd heard from. So we're going to put out a reminder for the meeting. Um, but that's where we stand, you know, with that right now. Also had a little brief discussion with him about tax sale. So with all the fun going on, we will be looking at a tax sale as well at some point. And, you know, I would say fall, but, you know, could, it'll be between now and March, there'll be a tax yeah. sale. We did our last tax sale in March, so we'll be doing another one. Okay. All right. And then I'm not sure I, the day after we set the 18th of December's meeting, I get notified that my first basketball game is on the 18th. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if it's home or away. If it's home, I can get here easily. If it's away, then I'll be missing it. So okay. we'll, and Dave won't be here. So we'll be down to just three board members. Take charge. That's right. So um, well, I, I just, try, I'm going to try to attend Zoom. Gotcha. But I don't, yeah. I'm pretty sure I will not be here in person. All right. And we'll um, <laughs> add that on my calendar. So yeah, that's right. Thirteenth and the thirteenth and the twentieth. Mm-hmm. Was it the twentieth in November? Uh, uh, December. Oh, okay. All right. Eighteenth. Okay. Because oh. we moved. Remember, we moved the one yep. from 
Yeah. And the other thing, Christmas we, to- we can also see where we're at at that point. Maybe we don't need that meeting. It kind of depends where we are with the budget and this and that. So we can also see um, where we're at. You know, I don't know at this point. So. And then if people are going to run for board, they need to have their stuff in by second, oh, third right. week in January or something like it's what, six Six or seven Mondays before town meeting day. Yeah, so it's it a consent of candidate, and you'll also, I believe, you'll have to get signatures to, on your yeah, petition. Yeah, one percent. Yeah, so we've talked a little bit about this. So if people are not going to run, um, I think it would be good to make that announcement sooner rather than later. Yeah. I mean, people can write a write-in campaign, but you know, with a last-minute push like that, you really you don't always get possibly the best candidate because they haven't had a chance to really think about. It. I mean, Denise came in and did her homework and 15. she talked to Paul, she talked to Dave, she talked to me like, and came in and, and really met with people to talk about what they wanted to do. Gene talked to people before he ran. So if we have, so if people aren't going to run, um, I know sometimes people say, oh, well, I'll find someone to fill my seat. It doesn't work that way. Just mm. announce that you're not going to run. And but give people some time to think about it and talk to their families. Or I also encourage people, and I said this to Denise as well, if you're going to run or you have interest in running for the select board, that's wonderful. Start coming to the meetings now so that people can see you, that you understand the topics that we're talking about. You know, sometimes, you know, I've been doing this a long time. People come with an agenda and they realize after a period of time, it's really bigger than that. You know, when I say we do the business of the town, that's really, it's sometimes real boring stuff. That's what we're doing. So if people aren't going to run, you know, I I would encourage you to, to give notice so that people can really think about it. And I checked with Pam, but I'm pretty sure it's January, January 15th is when, yeah. I think it's 7 Seven Mondays prior to I haven't been a town clerk in a while. I would hate to say they changed election yeah. law. So I think it's seven you can Mondays look at the prior to State's website so. or call Pam and she'll tell you. I can't remember off the top of my head, but but yeah, so that's the that's the deal. And um because this year it's Gene and Lindley, much to Dave's chagrin. I kept telling him it was him and, and then I realized it wasn't. He's like, What? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like, I'm sorry, Dave, I had the wrong person. I think, so, I think his uh, was tenure, right? I think tenure. so. I think he had a ten-year term. I think so. <laughs> and uh, so I, uh, so that's who it is this year. So, so. Dave, you up next year yep. then? Mm-hmm. So you- I'm not up. I'm he's, he's not running. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Sure. He's not I'll running. Tell you all say, <laughs> I'm not running next year. Yep. Well, you paid your dues and then some. The school and then uh, three years in public service. Mm-hmm. What will you do without that paycheck now? <laughs> You'll get money. Yeah. Uh, save know. money and gas, not having to <laughs> not having to drive to the meetings. It'll save that much money and gas. So, yeah. anyway, so uh, but yeah. I think the tough thing right now, and you know, obviously we see it at school as well, is you know there was this um, renowned attraction for everybody to get involved at the town and school levels here Mm -hmm. up until maybe about a year or two ago and now you're starting to see it starting to drop off again and there's Mm -hmm. not as many individuals um wanting to be a part of that again it's a real hardcore people that should have got out yeah so Mm -hmm. you you can kind of see it again it's going down and you i mean like look at the energy committee you know, we've, we're down to just a few people mm-hmm. now in the energy committee and we're gaining maybe another on that planning commission, which will be nice, but it is hard. You don't, you know, we're not get even with the full court press, you know, we're not getting the interested people that we used to, but you know what, with some public, you know, what people know, give them a chance to think, and maybe even if you're not going to run to reach out, then maybe people will reach out you to you directly and say, Hey, you know, if you're not going to run, you know, they may ask you some questions about it because, you know, for most people, it's just time, you know, just, you know, it's not that we hate each other. It's just at some point there's just time and, and people I mean, take, yeah, exactly. On some days, yeah. Was that, so? uh, but it's hard. I think people just, really commitments. Like people don't want to go to meetings. Yeah. But they'll go for a short term, they'll volunteer to do a task, but. 
And, yeah. and that's iffy sometimes. Yeah. No, I, I saw your hat because you're still looking for window dressers. I saw, I saw your front porch. I'm like, there's Gene. He's still looking for people. <laughs> yep. So. Um, oh, that week, you're all invited to uh, spend a couple hours here helping put windows together. Um, so this is the fire chief. He's like, we just cleared the scene. Do you need to see him? Yeah, tell him he needs beer in a half hour. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be uh, out of here. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I'll be able to get home. <laughs> apparently, that was just like the same thing. Um, so, anyways, yeah, it's just, it, but you're right, people don't, and, or they want, like you said, a short term task, so which reminds me. Um, when are you tying up the town? Is it November 13th? We actually, we need to meet at the town office on November 13th. Yeah, that we, that. Yeah, that's the week. That's it, fine. It, yeah. I had a note on my calendar um, and I saw it today when I was flipping through, I think, because Chris had asked me about the budget. So it's in 10, November. 16, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's <laughs> winging stuff. I think, but I didn't know what it was. It was like, I thought it was um, it, it came straight. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I didn't realize what it was until it's it went rubber band. Over by my head. Yeah. So November 13th, we'll go, we'll be at the town office. I won't be in person next week. All right. I'm going to, I say I'm going to write that down. I didn't think you were here today. I didn't think that today. I think you really heard it soon. Yeah. We might. So what you're day? all sitting there going, is it this week? That's what November we do. November 13th. We do. We get stuff. No. So it's November 13th. Okay. No, yeah. Lynn. Not October. No, Lynn. All right. You're going to be, I'll be remote. Yeah. Be a Zoom. I'll be here. Just. Dave and I will be hanging out drinking wine together. Yeah. Okay. Can't even drink wine. Might not mix with <laughs> might not mix with his meds. I don't yeah. know. Okay. We won't be drinking wine together. Dave, Dave, Dave will be making some wild, wild motions. motions. Yeah, margaritas. <laughs> so I, you wouldn't believe what you have to go through to get meds now. Yeah. This whole opiate opiate thing. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. They want to know everything and can't take this until after you've done this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even trying to get rid of them. I had, you know, a child had surgery and, and so there was leftover that, you know, she just took them for like a day. And then I took them back to the pharmacy and they're like, well, we don't take them back. And I'm like, well, what do we I do? You think that they would dispose of them? I know. And she you said, know, no. That would be and, the most logical. Yeah. Well, and then she tells me, she's well, like, yeah, right. Well, she said, you shouldn't be driving around with those in your car. And I'm like, what? And she's like, that prescription isn't in your name. So she's like, if you get pulled over, you're in possession of opioids that aren't yours. And I'm like, oh. and I'm like, what? So she said, Teresa, drug yeah. dealer. <laughs> See, sweet no, talk out of that. Them. So I end up taking them to the VSP. If you walk in the front door, there's a prescription drop and you can That's dump crazy. them there because they're like, don't throw them out. Yeah, don't throw them out. Don't flush them down. So I'm like, so then she's like, I'm like, well, good lord, yeah. how are you supposed to get rid of them if you can't transport them? I'm like, I had nightmares for a week. Well, they, yeah, oh, exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and there is right here at the VSP. If you pull yeah. right in, who oh, knows? She had me all freaked out. I'm like, great. I got a speeding ticket and lose my job all in one place. Stop. I'm like, good Lord. <laughs> no, you're not getting off that easy. It's going to take more than opiates to get rid of you. I don't think so. Yeah, I'm like, that's when you get automatically signed up for two more two years. years. Yeah. Two yeah. more years. Oh, which I should tell you that. Yeah, that's right. It was Zoom I should tell you too. I just finished. I just completed the first year of my two-year contract. So, just so you know, oh, just three more years, years to go. go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, guess you didn't read the fine print on that <laughs> one, but it's did you? Apparently not. Yeah. Apparently not. All right. So, Anything else come before the board, or if not, just need a motion to adjourn. So, second. All right.